Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about this very interesting discovery of an unusual exoplanet whose orbit seems to be extremely similar to what we expect the hypothetical planet 9 to have as well. This planet, whose name you see on the screen right there, though maybe very different from what we expect planet 9 to be, could actually help us explain how such planets are formed in other star systems. So let's talk a little bit more about this, but first a quick reminder of why we even believe that Planet 9 might be out there. So this is actually a controversial issue today because a lot of signs point at the non-existence of this unusual planet, unlike the initial study from the 2016 that identified these specific clues pointing at the existence of something massive out there, something that was causing the orbits of these unusual objects to incline in a very peculiar manner. But in the last few years, a lot of alternative explanations and a lot of alternative theories suggested that these inclinations could also just be caused by various imbalances inside our solar system that could have been actually forming this unusual gravitational influence on various smaller objects. Although a much more prominent, more recent analysis also suggested that all this could also just be a statistical anomaly and actually present a very good evidence for why Planet 9 just doesn't probably exist. But until we actually really sort of thoroughly search every part of the night skies, which we probably should be doing because it's going to lead to a lot of various incredible discoveries, as it already has in the last few years by the way, we're probably not going to know for sure if the planet exists or if it's some sort of a statistical anomaly or can be explained in some other way. Either way though, assuming that it does exist and assuming that it's just hiding somewhere out there, the big next question becomes how can it possibly form in such an unusual region of solar system while still being massive enough, possibly around the mass of Uranus, and still possessing a lot of features of a typical planet that would also allow it to modify the outer solar system? Current planetary formation models don't actually explain how such a planet could form, and so trying to find it somewhere out there, somewhere in another star system, could first of all confirm its existence to some extent, but also help us explain how it was probably formed in those other star systems. And we haven't really seen anything until now, because it looks like something unusual is happening in this particular star system, the star system known as HD 106906. But first of all, it's also important to understand that this particular star system is somewhat different from the solar system. It's a binary system with two stars in a relatively tight orbit around one another located roughly around 340 light years away from the solar system. And the planet itself was discovered around 7 years ago, but back then we had no idea what its orbit around the star system was, we only knew the distance away from the binary, the distance being around 650 astronomical units. Although the more recent estimates suggest that it's maybe even farther, around 730 astronomical units. And just for comparison, this is of course the orbit of Neptune at around 30 astronomical units. This system is also relatively young, it's around 15 million years old, suggesting that it also still has its uh, planetary disk around it, which is also visible in the study that you can find in the description below, in the images created right here. And what's really unusual about it is that it's not necessarily flat. It seems to have been skewed by something and also seems to be protruding on this side more so than on the other side. Although in this particular case, this is the outer part of the uh, circumstellar or planetary disk, which would be equivalent to the Kuiper belt in the solar system with all of these various objects, including these unusual trans-Neptunian objects that do have certain unusual orbits, some of which are more difficult to explain than others. But as you can see in this star system, the inclination and the protrusions are a lot more dramatic than in the solar system which can easily be explained by the fact that this particular planet is a lot more massive than anything we estimate the planet 9 to be or even anything that we currently have in the solar system. This planet is about 11 masses of Jupiter, which would most likely make it look something like this, but at the same time would almost make it a brown dwarf. It's not quite there yet, but it is massive enough to start exhibiting properties that are often associated with a typical brown dwarf. But despite the distances involved and the fact that we knew nothing about its orbit, the scientists behind the study were able to use the observations from the Hubble telescope and essentially using the observations over the past 14 years, they were then able to create the orbital parameters for this planet 
discovering its exact orbit and realizing that it's very similar to the orbit we predict Planet 9 to have. It's essentially very eccentric, and it also possesses very high inclination to the rest of the star system. The orbit that's very similar to the one we predict for Planet 9. With the period of one year being roughly around 15,000 years, the inclination being roughly around 36 to maybe 44 degrees, which is somewhere around this much, if it were to orbit in the solar system of course, and the closest approach to the star system being around 500 astronomical units away from the binary system. With one of the more interesting discoveries of course being the disk itself. It's not symmetric and is pointing toward the planet, which of course suggests that the planet is majorly disrupting the formation of this particular star system. But how could such a planet form? Well, the most prevalent theory right now goes as follows. First of all, we have to remember that this is a binary system. Binary systems generally create an extremely unstable gravitational region which only allows for certain orbits to be possible, either an orbit extremely close to one of the stars or a certain region that's sort of marked around this area where a planet can technically have a stable orbit. Anything closer to the binary system will unfortunately create too much instability, eventually throwing out the planet or potentially having it crash with one of the stars. Here's a quick demonstration using two suns and Earth. Notice how the orbit of this hypothetical Earth starts changing quite dramatically, quite fast. And within only a few hours actually, it's going to become extremely eccentric and most likely either become dislodged from the star system or possibly end up orbiting much closer to one of the stars. So these so-called circumbinary planets are actually quite rare. We've only discovered a few of them out there and there's a very specific region where the stability is possible, but everywhere beyond that, it's usually going to lead to basically the planet being thrown out or the stars just swallowing this planet. And so because of this, we believe that this planet may have formed somewhere on the outskirts, maybe about three astronomical units away from the binary star system. But eventually, because of the presence of the planetary disk itself, it started to interact with the particles here, which created a bit of a drag, which led to the planet to lose some of its velocity and move closer and closer to the center of the star system. And naturally, as it moved closer and closer, the orbit became destabilized and eventually it most likely just got kicked out to the outskirts. But this is where the scientists are not entirely sure what may have happened. They believe that maybe by sheer luck, some other star passing nearby may have actually stabilized the orbit of the planet, causing it to assume a very eccentric and very inclined orbit around the binary star system. In other words, maybe there was a star passing somewhere on the outskirts that stabilized the orbit, creating the system that we're observing right now. But this means two things. This means that another star in some near future could also pass by and destabilize the planet once again, most likely throwing it out once and for all. It also means that this particular orbit is very unstable and will eventually change with time, thus also changing the shape of the future star system as well. Which of course implies several things. First of all, well, because this is a binary system, it would be very difficult for us to explain similar creation of Planet 9 in the solar system, but in some sense maybe a smaller planet could be kicked out by Jupiter and could be stabilized by nearby passing stars as well. On the other hand, because of the instability of this orbit, and because this orbit may have been shifted by a nearby star, something similar most likely occurred in the solar system as well, and considering that this is a completely brand new star system, it's only about 13 to 15 million years old, and our solar system is over 4.5 billion years old, this really kind of implies that chances for us to find Planet 9 out there are very low. Chances for the planet to still be in that very unusual eccentric orbit are very minuscule. If the planet is still out there, there is very little reason for the Planet 9 to still be out there if this is indeed how the creation story of this planet goes. There were so many different star passages in the last few billion years that the planetary orbit would have been destabilized a long time ago, sending it out of the solar system, creating what's known as a rogue planet. And so in that sense, this study is actually great at showing us that these planets can exist, but it also actually creates a lot more questions than answers. Questions of origins of these planets and also how they're formed 
and most importantly, how long they stay in these orbits before they're completely dislodged by something else passing nearby. But the true answer to the existence of Planet 9 or non-existence of Planet 9 will probably finally be available to us within the next decade or so. Chances are that by then we will have covered most of the night skies and we will also have discovered a lot of new incredible things that are probably going to be even more interesting than the Planet 9 itself. And in that sense, we should definitely still keep looking for this object even if it doesn't exist. The chance of us discovering something incredible is actually really, really high. Anyway, on that note, that's all I wanted to mention in this video. If you would like to learn more about the study, it's in the description below. And thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, maybe share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before. Also, maybe support our channel on Patreon, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.